the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite and Robert Barr in Kansas City, Missouri, Ike Pappas in Independence, Missouri, Charles Kuralt in Independence, Neil Strausser in Washington, and George Natanson in Managua, Nicaragua. Good evening. Former President Harry S. Truman died this morning at age 88. The long vigil at Kansas City's research hospital came to an end when hospital spokesman Wayne Connery made the announcement. The Honorable Harry S. Truman, 33rd President of the United States, died at 7.50 a.m. at Research Hospital and Medical Center. They waited patiently for the presidential proclamation of mourning before lowering the flag outside Kansas City's Research Hospital. It was done calmly and with dignity, very much in keeping with the former president's last hours here. He was in a deep coma then, his body swiftly giving way. For three weeks, he had fought off the effects of advancing age and a weakened heart even when the drugs were no longer working. He went quickly this morning, a hospital source said, but peacefully. Harry Truman's neighbors on North Delaware Street Independence did not wait for a presidential proclamation to honor their neighbor. When word of the end came, they quietly lowered their flags to half staff and then took a moment to remember what they liked best about him. I think his friendliness. I mean, how often do you have this close a connection to somebody of this integrity? and have him always willing to speak to you and to stop and talk to you and uh, to make you feel like as if he knew you. This is the thing that sticks in my mind more than anything else. What do you think is the reaction of your neighbors in Independence? Well, I can't speak for my neighbors, but you can see the flags that are flying on the homes of the neighbors are half masked. I think this says it. They're really quite sorry, I'm sure. I know we all feel like we've lost a good friend. The flag was also lowered this morning at number 219 North Delaware, the Truman residence. A lone Secret Service man stood guard on the lawn, as within Mr. Truman's wife Bess, the childhood sweetheart he married 53 years ago, mourned. She had suffered with him through the long hours and days of the hospital vigil, and she was tired. Late this afternoon, Mrs. Truman, accompanied by her daughter, Mrs. Margaret Truman Daniel, and her husband, left to go to Carson's funeral home, where the former president's body was now prepared for repose. There was little else stirring today from the house on North Delaware. Ike Pappas, CBS News, Independence. The funeral observances will last for two days, but without the pomp and fanfare usually accorded to great statesmen, this was the request of Mr. Truman himself. Tomorrow, the body will go by motorcade from the Carson Funeral Home in Independence to the Truman Library and will lie in state there for 24 hours. Thursday, after funeral services in the library's auditorium, Mr. Truman will be buried on the library grounds in a quiet and private ceremony. President Nixon does not plan to attend the funeral, but he and Mrs. Nixon will fly to Independence tomorrow for a wreath-laying ceremony at the library. <laughs>